life the way God wants us to. If we have a world of ordinary people, extraordinary things will happen to me and you. Hallelujah. 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 You know, can I? Sometimes there's some things that you take a whole service to talk about. Let's go through Genesis. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go through all the books. You will try before you find a preacher. Abraham wasn't a preacher. Moses wasn't a preacher. You notice that? I can go on. Noah was he a preacher? You have to get to the prophets like Isaiah. You have to get to the prophets like Micah. That you hear them preaching. And most of the time they were not preaching to a congregation. They were actually preaching to a nation. And not only were they preaching to a nation. They were preaching to their leaders. There's this mist that thinks miracles and supernatural things should happen in church. But ordinary people walking before God will have extraordinary lives. And they will touch people where they are. Nobody's coming to church. I'm telling you this. Nobody's coming to church. We are meant to go there. Not go there for evangelism. It's where we live and walk and have everything we do. It's a notion. I've been trying to change this mindset for years. I haven't done too much of a good job with it. But have, have you ever wondered... You know, one of the things that fascinates me in the, in, the, in the Bible is when Jesus goes to an offering bucket and he's looking. If, I, if all of you paid your tithe and I brought out your envelopes and said, okay, let us see what Mr. Kuti Yang gave today. Won't she leave the church? Come on, talk to mama. You won't even come to church because you'll be afraid. What's pastor going to think of me? Ah, Mrs. Okuti Yang gave us 200 naira. Ah, things must be hard for her. So let's pray for her. No, but that's what Jesus did. He went to the offering bucket to see what people were giving. But at the same time, he also eavesdropped on prayers. That man who came in and said, I tithe, I give, I do that, I do this. Lord, you must answer my prayer. Another man went there and, and said, you know, <laughs> I'm not even going to pray. Don't forget to pay your tithe. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not even going to pray. I, I'm just going to beat my chest and say, have mercy on me. And the Bible says, to the eyes of Jesus, he was more righteous. Oh God. All these displays we do. You know, in the Catholic church where I was, you had to give an offering, even if it was a coin. Because you couldn't see yourself coming out. Most of you watch me sometimes in church and say, ah, this pastor doesn't tithe. So. But what should I do when I have a diamond up? I do my transfer. Bam. Put it back in my pocket. Do, you have to, do I have to do it in front of you? Bring big notes like this? So everybody know I'm giving? But let's go back to those two men. Let me read something to you. Don't, he, say, he says, watch out. Do not do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others for you will lose your reward of your father in heaven. I don't like it when you are giving gifts to somebody. You bring all the camera crews in the world. Take photographs and put it on Facebook. The Bible says you have gotten your reward. I don't want the reward of Facebook. Who wants that? Who wants that? But there's something. Those two men who prayed. These were prayers, alms, thanksgiving, fasting. Jesus said, one were to be done as private matters. The practice of, was a practice of purely religious duties was meant to be done as a secret to God. One woman would get up and say, ah, this is my 19th day of fasting. How many of you will join me? She just got her reward.
Now, the song we're going to sing next to you, sit down because God is going to talk to you. Not you talk to God. Some voices raised. You don't need a congregation to offer me your praise. You don't need a mighty orchestra to bless me with your song. You get all. When you worship me alone Say you don't need majestic choir Awesome voices raised you don't need a congregation to offer me your praise. You don't need a mighty orchestra to bless me with your song. Father. And he says, I love to hear you when you sing that song and you worship me alone. Mm -hmm. This is your father saying, I love to hear you when sing your song and you worship me alone come on open your voice and sing that song sing alone to hear you.
should be your voice when you sing to me. You don't have to have a sweet voice. You don't have to have a sweet and melodious voice. He loves you like that. He loves you just the way you are. He loves you just the way you are. Just sing to me. Just sing to me. Just sing. your father you don't have to have a melodious voice to sing to your God you don't have to have a perfect voice like you to sing a song of praise to him he loves it like that he loves it like that he loves it like that he loves your voice the way it is he loves your voice the way it is he wants to hear you sing to him no sing your voice Sing that song, sing that song. Even if it's not perfect, sing it like that. Even if it's not perfect, sing it like that. I love that voice when you sing to me. I love. I love to hear you sing that song when you worship me. When you worship me. Can I ask you to please stand? There's only one response to that song. There's only one response to that song. I love to hear your voice. I love to hear you. I love to hear your voice. Lift your hands. I love to hear your voice. Is it you are worthy of my praise? That's the song. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. As you are worthy of my praise. Shut up. 
Leka bosa hezakaya bosa. He's here. Sing here. God is God. Let him be God. He's here right now. He's here right now. Right now. Right now. You can feel him. You can feel him. He's here worthy of your praise. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy. Oh, yes, you are worthy. You ask me to sing to you, so I sing. Gently now, gently, gently. Gently, gently, gently. You are worthy of my praise. You know, you know, this is the place you get to where well, you sometimes don't know what to do, but I tell you this. The next song we're going to sing is supposed to be casting crowns, but I want to create a premise and I want to pray for the sick and those who, who just have one challenge or the other. But I want to say this to you. When you get into his presence, that's why they cast their crown down. Because he's the only one that's worthy. Because he's the only one that's worthy. An audience of one. You're in front of him right now, naked. 
This is not the time to cover your super with super, your superficial wounds. This is the time to tell him the truth. That he can help you. That's what Jacob did. He says, I'm a 419, I'm a cheat. I stole birthrights. I cheated my uncle Laban. But God said, from today, you will no longer be called Jacob, but you'll be called Israel. You'll be called a prince with God because you've wrestled with him and has overcome. But the Bible says he left that place limping. I don't know about you this morning. What is it that you're carrying? I want to pray for you right now. Just go to him. Just go to him. You know, whatever you think, whoever you are, it's time to humble yourself. It's time to say, I'm nobody. But I'm everything you made me. The Bible says the list in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. And then there was no prophet greater than the John the Baptist. So I'm precious. But in spite of all that, I want to come and cast my crown down. I want to come and lay it aside. I want to say to you that, Lord, I need you. I think there's a scripture that says, I need you more than my necessary bread. It means that food is not as important as you are to me. It is in you I move, I live, and have my being. I'm laying aside my, my certificates, my qualifications, how good I am at work. I'm laying aside what men have said about me. I'm laying aside what men even think about me. Some people think you're successful, but you know you are not. Some people think you are kind, but you know you are not. Some people think you are generous, but you know you are not. Some people think you love your husband or you love your wife, but you know you don't. But you're coming to lay everything aside this morning and say, Lord, without you, I'm nothing. I'm coming to cast my crown again. Whether it's a crown of thorns or a crown of thieves or even an honor crown. Paul says they are weight and the crown for me. The crown that God will give. That's the crown I need. Come on, let's go. Oh! Lifting crown, lifting hands, and bowing all his call we've come to do.
generation will rise to worship you. My generation will rise to worship you. your strength from this is where you get your strength from not from the prayer of any man of God but being in the presence of God the Bible says Jesus struggled at the garden of Gethsemane the Bible says his sweat began to come out like drops of blood and then an angel came and strengthened him this is where you get your energy from and when you are done, you will rise up full of energy and the anointing. You live for the audience of one. There's nobody else that can give you this. No church, no organization, no man. Even that man needs God. We will rise. We will rise. We will rise in the name of Yahweh. Ah. We will rise in the name of Jesus. Ah. We will rise. We will rise. We will rise in the name of Jesus. lift up your hand to the Lord. I don't know where your problem is this morning. If you're sick in body, put your hand on it. You know, we usually don't have people come out for the real things that bother them. But believe me, you're getting strength this morning. He's exchanging your weakness with his strength. Because you've put your crown down. Because you've humbled yourself before him. 
Yesterday I began to pray for the choir that the gift of God that is in them will be stirred up. Those gifts that have gone dormant, that they'll be stirred up again. In the name of the Lord. Father, we lift up your children before you this morning. All right. I'll wait. I'll listen and I'll wait. You may be seated for a minute. Just have two more songs for you. We'll be out of here in good time. I, I, I carefully selected the songs because they're songs you already know. But what I simply did was show you a different direction to look at the song. Am I making sense? And the reason being that this concept of an audience of one is not something we do once a month. It's a lifetime commitment to. Are you here? Amen? You know that you must teach your children that there's somebody watching them that is above you. Am I making sense? My two boys are in Canada. One of them is around. Edward is around. He's upstairs somewhere. And I don't know what they're doing in Canada. I don't live with them. I don't have a camera in their place. They don't tell me. And as a matter of fact, I remember last time when they came around, I think it was, I don't know whether it's Mr. Bangwo Smith or somebody else. Do you have a girlfriend? My, his mother and I put our ear to say, can we hear the answer? Because we can't dare ask him that. Do you have a girlfriend? We have to put our ear like this. Is it, do you have? Because we don't want to scare him away. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. But this is the Bible says, told, told us to train up a child in the way he should go. Now, when he's older, he will not depart from it. The only confidence I can have is whether or not I put values in them when they were young. Are you here? Are you here? And so, for you and I, we must teach our children that there's somebody bigger than us. You must reveal to them that there's a glorious redeemer. There's somebody so awesome that this life can't contain him. You know, those two men who, were, who I spoke to you about, I like what somebody wrote here. It says, the Pharisee played to the audience of many. He was a people pleaser. The tax collector played to the audience of one. He was a God pleaser. Listen, I like the two commandments. You know why? They saved me the truth. You know, most of us think that there are only ten commandments. The Jews have thousands of commandments. They extrapolated on the ten commandments and they went into Deuteronomy and Numbers and got more commandments. Can you imagine living your life by a law? But God said, the simple law I want you to live your life by is love me with all your heart and love your neighbor. That's simpler. So I'm trying to tell you this morning that living to an audience of one will solve more problems in your life than any other thing. And so, I want to ask you a question before they come up to sing this song. What is the size of your audience right now? I, I have a school group. I went to Federal Government College in Lawrence. So we have an old students association. Now, I'm sorry to say this on television or radio, whatever we're on. <laughs> Sometimes when, I, when you join those old students association, you notice how everybody wants to go backwards rather than forward. They want to reminisce about what happened before. What happened before is not going to change. What we should be fighting for is what's going to happen ahead of us. And so when I sit down on the group, I see all the things they're discussing. Do you remember when we were this? Remember when we were that? Remember when we used to do this? And I'm wondering, what difference does it make? It's what we're going to do tomorrow. Then I remember um, Reverend Alonge. He had, he had, I think he had weak, sick, 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 polio. And so Reverend Alonge walks funny because he has a, a little bit of a bad leg. And he said, Francis, you know my biggest problem? They are always asking me to join every disabled group. We are looking for the lowest denomination rather than finding the highest denomination to join. 
In other words, come and join me because we are crippled. No. Come and join me because I have a great God. Come and join me because I'm going to a great place. Remember when, when Moses was trying to convince his father-in-law? He says, come with us. Why? For the Lord has spoken good concerning us. Oh 
worthy of your praise? Is he worthy of your praise? Have you been blessed this morning? Have you been blessed this morning? Can you appreciate the rain choir for me, please? There will be no hour, no minute you give to the ministry of this work and to the lives of the other that heaven will not record in your favor. I promise you, help will arise from you in so many places that you will not believe that it's from a little sacrifice like this that help has come. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I did not tell you I was back. Okay, the Indian lady. I'm going to close with one song. And I love this example. Joseph and Potiphar's wife. You know why I like it? Do you know at that moment of his temptation, he had no father? Do you know he had no brothers? Do you know that he had no master? No colleagues? Nobody who would witness what was going to happen? Now, it wasn't so much that he resisted. It was the reason why he resisted. He said, how can I commit such a sin? Not against his master. Not against his religion. He says, how can I commit such a sin against who? God. There's this young girl. I mean, Susan Madugu. I wish Susan was watching this. Susan's father was a Bible translator. Uh, my sister here knows her. Yeah. Susan's father was a Bible translator. Susan is one of the most beautiful persons you would ever meet in your life. Susan used to make adire. Beautiful adire. She was so adire boo-boos and there were cargo planes in Lagos that were literally carrying her adire boo-boos all over the world. She had this boyfriend who was Muslim and they were making millions of naira. And this boy kept begging her, Susan, I, 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 marry me, marry me, marry me. And one day Susan said to me, she said, Francis, I can't marry him. She says, from the day I have been alive, my father has loved me unconditionally. Not her heavenly father, her earthly father. He loves me. He's even accepted this Muslim to come and visit and work with me. He has never done anything wrong to me. She says, if I marry this man, not only will I hurt my, my earthly father, I will hurt her my heavenly father by being unequally yoked. She lived for an audience of oh It looks like a tiny little topic, but I'm taking you through a curriculum. Most of you will find that when you've left this church. That's the only audience that matters. Do you wish to be inner directed rather than outer directed? Truly make one audience decisive. The audience of one. Jesus of Nazareth. What did he say? Do you know the simplest instructions he said after he died? Follow me. Follow me. Who are you following? A bishop? Your husband? Your children? Some of you follow your children. You literally follow them. Your boss. Or one wealthy man who you hope will make you rich one day. But he said, do what? Follow me. Do you know why he can say that? He was speaking as the first person. He was speaking in first person. As the second person of the Godhead. It's because he is God. That's why he says, follow me. You have no obligation to follow anybody. Even Paul says, follow me as I follow God. Christ. Who are you following? It's because he's God.
Oh, 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 oh,
needs no help. Indeed, he's God. Indeed, he's God. Indeed, he's God. Indeed, he's God. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. Times and seasons are indeed in your hands. We thank you. We thank you. Because we're to live for you alone. We're to stand for you alone. Thank you, Father, for today. We give you praise. We thank you for opening our eyes and our spirits to understand the audience of one. That we will live our lives, not only today, not only tomorrow, but every day, every minute, every hour, every second, for you and you alone. For indeed you are God, seated above the heavens, seated on your throne of majesty we acknowledge you we cast down our crowns for you alone we live for in you we live for in you we move for in you we have our being thank you father lord just appreciate him this morning appreciate him this morning appreciate him this morning appreciate him this morning we thank you for the things you have done thank you thank you thank you for every sickness and disease has been lifted thank you because you've made pathways in the wilderness this morning you have caused streams to flow in desert places Yet we may not understand or know it, but our eyes shall see it. We give you praise for it, Master, this morning. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Just appreciate him once again. Appreciate him once again. Appreciate him once again. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you because you are God alone. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Father, we thank you for Pastor. Thank you for his family. Thank you because he has watered this morning. Lord, we ask that you will water him back in the name of Jesus. You will cause his feet to be like hinds feet in the name of Jesus. Let a freshness of your spirit come upon him. Let the freshness of your spirit well up from the inside of him this morning. He will flourish like the tree planted by the rivers. Bless his family, bless his whole household, that they will indeed lack nothing because he has served you this morning. Because he has brought forth to the house the audience of one. Let him experience the presence of the audience of one. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let the people of God say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless this afternoon. Have we been indeed blessed this afternoon? Can we jam our hands together for the Lord? Just quick announcements before we close service this morning. Uh, three days fasting and prayer program. June. Please um, just, just know that's next week, Monday through to Wednesday. Uh, the theme is prophetic intercession. That's the three days fasting and prayer for the month of June. June 4th to 6th, 2018, 5 p.m. in the evening. On Tuesday, this Tuesday, we're still continuing. Uh, we are resuming our Tuesday prayer meeting. It's intercessory prayers, bridging the gap. It's just bringing back the Tuesday prayer meeting for us to come to pray. Because I don't know to who else we can go to other than to God. So we are bringing back the Tuesday prayer meetings, 5 p.m. in the evening. It's just all prayers, all prayers. Please, let's take advantage of this. Wednesday, we'll still have our house of prayer and word bank. 
Wednesday by 5 p.m. in the evening, led by the Spirit is still the theme we are looking at, led by the Spirit. The kids and teens' visions, vision hours and life skills as well still is this Wednesday. And the theme, what they'll be studying is how habits can make them to be productive. How habits can help them to be productive. Please, let's bring our children 5 p.m. in the evening while we also come attend the House of Prayer and Word Bank on Wednesday. Um, I think this has already been... Okay, all men, please, all men should wait immediately after service for a brief meeting in preparation for the Father's Day coming up June 17th. Please, all men, immediately after service, please let's wait for a brief meeting. And as well, everyone involved in the financial peace training, everyone, I know we've received emails, so you know yourself, please, there'll be a meeting with pastor in his office immediately after service. Everyone involved in the financial peace training, please, let's just move straight to pastor's office immediately after the service. And um, still based on the financial peace, we're having the financial peace weekend, June 16th and 17th, 2018, which will be hosted by the men's ministry of the church. And um, there is also registration for that meeting because the whole Saturday will be fully packed from morning through to evening. Please, you can go to, I think it's on the screen, IamAGoodMan.com, IamAGoodMan.com to register so that we can have adequate um, statistics of those who will be attending. And the program is also designed in such a way that there will be sessions for children, there will be sessions as well for teenagers, while men and women will be together for their own session. But it's also an opportunity for us to invite as many friends as possible for us, for them, for us to learn about these principles. So please, let's mark the date, June 16th and 17th of June. Please, let's mark the date and plan to attend. Like I said, please, for us to register, just go to the website, IamAGoodMan.com. I am a good man. Everything together, I am a good man. Just type it together, dot com. You can register on that page. And you can also, I think it's already been shared on the um, church's WhatsApp page or group platform please let's use that tool the video is being re-edited so that for the new dates to be added once that is done by close of today we shall send it to us please if this is your first time worshiping with us at the bridge network we want to recognize you we want to appreciate you and we want to welcome you can you just graciously rise to your feet this morning if you're worshiping with us for the very first time at the bridge network please rise on your feet if this is your first time here worshiping with us do we have anyone do we have anyone thank you very much my dear brother please can you just graciously rise to your feet please those around him let's welcome him let's welcome him thank you very much for attending service this morning i want to believe that you've been blessed um the ushers will direct you to the welcome desk to properly introduce the church to you Thank you very much. All right, can we rise up on our feet as we take the grace together this morning? It's been a glorious service. It's been an impactful one, I believe. But more importantly, the lesson for this morning is to whom do you live your life? Is it to that audience of one? Or is it to your husband, your wife, your family, your colleagues at work, or your community? But something that is rest assured is that it is unto this God someday and one day that we will stand to give account of all that we have done here. Let's share the grace together this morning. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a fulfilling, fruitful week. Please, all men, a brief meeting immediately after service. Then all those involved in the financial peace training will be having a meeting in pastor's office 
immediately after now, right now, actually. 